sleep last night thinking about what Jeff told me. I want to go back in. You still want to go through with this? Of course. I just don't want to jeopardize everything because you're pissed about your life. I am not pissed about my life. You're living at home with your mom. Your husband's in rehab. You're stuck down in the basement with the losers. You're not pissed. Maybe I'm a little pissed, but that has nothing to do with this. Doesn't it? I mean, you better be pretty sure about your motives, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get fired for this. Hey, Tyler, you were going to get fired anyway. Yeah, but I have a lot of relationships here. I'd be burning a bridge. Tyler, you're too nice. And just because we're in the basement doesn't mean we don't get to have a voice. And those people upstairs need to listen. You reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. Besides, the people down here, if they knew they were all gonna get fired and what we were doing, they'd be behind us all the way. Let's win one for the little guys. I gotta go to the bathroom. Hi everybody, I'm Peter Travers, and this is Popcorn, where we tell you what's happening in the pop culture everywhere. And you can see by this poster called Enlightened that Laura Dern has started the second season of her show on HBO. And I'm gonna force her to tell us a few things that happened. Now she won't listen to me, she'll slap me around. <laughs> but you can tell from that scene that what goes on in Enlightened just isn't business as usual. And so I welcome you, Laura Dern, to Thank the show. You. So great to see you. It's so great to see you. And as we were saying, we've met before, but it's been a while. Mm -hmm. And I just, I have to thank you, take this opportunity to thank you. Um, I'm being thanked? Yes. A critic is being thanked. A critic is being deeply because thanked. Because I want to hear flourishes because now. Because many people will interview actors and ask why they make the choices they make. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about being lucky enough to work with filmmakers who are daring and you know help us sort of go out on the cliff but you sir have been so generous to me and every time i've done something that's pretty radical which you do very frequently you have always consistently and i'm very grateful been the critic who has been a champion of either the film or my performance and spoken to the fearlessness of that character and the complexity of the character with great devotion instead of judgment. And for that, it always supported me in pushing myself further. And so I really, from the bottom of my heart, you've meant a lot to my career and my choices. Thank you for that, because it's a good thing when you're out there talking about when people are doing something that shows a, a kind of rebelliousness against form. Yeah. I think it's a great thing. And you've done it again with Enlightened. You've done a whole season and now it's back. It's back. People didn't say, we don't want that craziness anymore. They said, we want it again. Yes, yes HBO. You <laughs> did it. You, you had it. You did it. That this is a character who feels everything in such an enormous way and wants to do something to affect change. And she is as enormous a creature and as boundaryless or unaware of boundary that she in fact will do things that others may not do. Sometimes she'll do them very successfully and sometimes it will be uh, a cringe fest. As we, as we watch her try to make change in the world. Well, she starts by having a meltdown. I mean, that's the first thing we see. It's just... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no boundaries, no yeah. anything, not even for herself. Yes, season yeah. one starts with a breakdown in the middle of her you know, corporate office mm -hmm. that she's worked at for 15 years. She's immediately uh, sent for rehab of sorts and comes back deciding that in her new self-discovery, isn't it wonderful, she'll just try to change everybody else in her life. <laughs> so she tries to change her mother, who she's forced to move back in with as she's lost her job. So at almost 40, she's stuck home with mom. She tries to change her ex-husband, who's a former addict, and in turn then starts to look around at the company she's, do she's working for all these years and wants to affect change there as well. We've come to the end of that first season and we've seen Amy become a whistleblower. So you have to give us a clue as to what we're going to say without being really giving any spoilers. Well, when we started this whole process of developing the character, my kind of one-liner to HBO, my, my interest in the character was, because I I'm, was an obsessed I Love Lucy viewer as a child, and Lucy was a huge influence on me. I said, you know, what if, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I said, what if Lucy became Norma Ray? 
That was, mm -hmm. that was sort of the interest to me. So if like you will, um, we enter a world where the last possible person you might pick might be the one inane enough or brave enough to take on corporate America and try to make a difference. And in fact, that is what Amy does. There's a lot of you in her, yes. give or take, not this, including your mother, Diane Ladd, who is playing your mother, who often does, you exactly. know, to it's, do this. Yeah. What is that like? Other people say, look, I like to see my mother at holidays, you know, and you are just always there, you and Diane. You're together doing this. It's incredible. I mean, I will say it's very different at 40 than it was at 20. Is it? I can't imagine that would be. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. And she's like, how is it different, Laura? And I said, well, you know, when we were doing Rambling Rose, every word you said triggered me. Now every, like, tenth word you say triggers me. <laughs> wow, that's progress. <laughs> so, so we, uh, but we actually get along beautifully, and I am such an admirer of her and her bravery as an actor and her discipline because she's played characters who are much larger than life, and she is so resigned and withheld in this character, which is very not Diane and very not our relationship either. Um, and she's also a very loving mother. So to, to have this dynamic is just really interesting to play out together. And it's just incredible to work with her. There you are from this family of actors. How yeah. was there any choice for you other than that, to have Bruce Dern and Diane Ladd there? I was being raised by two actors and at, you know, five to ten, I was on sets with Martin Scorsese, Hal Ashby, Alfred Hitchcock, <laughs> watching them improvise Every child and does say, that just work. try everything. We want, we, characters have to be flawed. Protagonists have to be good and hold evil. Uh, you know, it was like yeah. a, temp, a road map to become an actor. I was very, very blessed. But when you start to appear, in, and, and the, the big one to me is uh, smooth talk. Oh. It's like, oh, look at her. Do you go to your parents for criticism? You know, we've never, oddly, we've never really had that relationship. I mean, they've been very complimentary and very supportive, but never really critics and never um, commenting on the work too much but very much supportive and commenting on choices. And that meant more than anything. To really consider uh, many times early on in my career, I would get two movies at the same time. And that speaks more to the career I've had than anything. Um, very difficult choices, probably at least five or six times, in which a movie that became the biggest movie ever yeah. was turned down to work for David Lynch or to do smooth talk instead of a Brat Pack film or that I had several of those real crucial turning point choices and uh, and I was supported by a tribe of people who suggested to go toward the filmmaker and to go toward the character that explored human behavior the most um, and that's a very specific career and one I feel very grateful for. <laughs> A tisket, a tasket, I found a yellow basket. I just like, I wrote a letter to my mommy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>